Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I'm Simply G and today I'm going to be talking about all of the anime that I got for this month. Uh, there's quite a bit just because some of my prior like Funimation birthday sale stuff came in um, and well right stuff birthday sale birthday sale Funimation stuff and discotheque stuff um, arrived plus a mix of like other titles that I picked up um, so rather than spend too long on this I'll get straight into it and I hope you guys enjoy first up we have a UK release um, one that I wasn't necessarily going to pick up um, but it was super duper cheap um, on Zavi I think they're just trying to get rid of the copies that they do have and this is the complete series of Erased, so it's just got a slipcover box set, both parts uh, for the complete 12 episodes, and I think it's just a black uh, back. I haven't opened this yet, as you can see. Um, I do like Erased, I think it's a interesting little series, uh, notably about, I mean, people... Even when it was being released, people kind of maybe expected more from it on the mystery aspect. Um, so this is a story about a 30-ish year old guy who um, has a near-death experience and is thrown back mentally to his 8-year-old self, um, his 8-year-old body. Um, he... Up until this point, he's kind of been just a struggling, you know, young guy. He doesn't have any real regular work. I think he works for uh, a, like, pizza delivery service. Um, but he's been struggling to become, like, a, a mangaka for a while. That hasn't really panned out. But it had gotten to, I think it was, like, the 10th or, um, yeah, like, 15th anniversary um, or 20th anniversary, maybe, of the death of one of his, his classmates. It's a pretty well-known um, murder in his area, and a whole string of, like, three or four young girls had had died, had disappeared and died uh, when, he was, uh, when he was a kid, including one of, one of his classmates. So when, you know, prior to him... Uh, being thrown back in time, he's kind of reflecting on this and really wondering um, how it could have been so long that you know, things come out, and also kind of reflecting that he was never really very close to this girl who disappeared, and it was, you know, a tragedy that that she died. Um, and just reflecting on the whole situation. Anyway, he gets sent back in time uh, and finds himself in his his like eight year old body or 12 year old I don't really remember how old he is um body just like in six or so months prior to this classmate disappearing and so he has a second chance to maybe prevent her death um there's in in this re like Groundhog Day style story um a couple of the other girls have already disappeared so this whole situation is ongoing and so not only is he trying to obviously prevent this girl's death, but also uncover who was responsible because that never was found out either. And perhaps also give himself a second chance and motivation to, to you know, be more proactive with his life in the current day. So, uh, as I said, I think some people were disappointed with the mystery aspect of this, maybe. Um, it's quite, of well, for me and, and many of the people who I knew who were watching it, it was quite obvious as to who the culprit, this, this murderous, crazed person was. Um, not exactly a surprise. <laughs> um, but I've always regarded this series not so much as a mystery series like mystery is an element of it but i would argue that it the mystery um kind of acts as 
the foundation for what the story is really about, and that is about Satoru, our main character, and his relationship with this girl, and um, exploring uh, exploring abuse, exploring how um, we can help others that we recognize are in really terrible situations, and and more so about the child characters um, and Satoru just in general then and and also his relationship with his mother his relationship with uh the kids in his hometown the or yeah his his childhood friends um rather than just being like oh i wonder who the murderer is um maybe you are someone who is surprised as to who the murderer is then that's totally okay and cool but i would say that the murder mystery is sort of secondary um, or even tertiary to everything else that's going on. And so in that sense, I do think it's very good. I think, um, I haven't read the manga, but I have seen the, um, live action, like the film adaptation. And that was weird. Like they made a lot of weird at it, like changes in the story for that. It was strange. <laughs> kind of ruins the whole end of the film um so I do think I, although I cannot speak to how well of an adaptation it is and I do plan to read the manga at some point um I do think it is a solid show I do think it's one that is worth re-watching and um considering for me at least that this was like very 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 cheap um it had been a, a show that I was kind of like not flip flopping on, but just like I didn't necessarily want to buy it if it wasn't like the a complete collection in a single case. I certainly wouldn't put down Aniplex prices for it, which I believe is what the US releases. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not bad, it's certainly not bad. Uh, it just is one that. The mystery aspect I don't think holds up on rewatches, but the character interaction stuff certainly does. Okay, release. This is the standard edition of Moribito, uh, put out by MVM. I already own the uh, Media Blasters Moribito. I never got the um, Viz release. Uh, and I never got the Sentai release, which is what these discs, I believe, are based off of. Um, I think most of them have various issues. I think Media Blasters has like pretty bad compression issues, um, whereas the latter two releases have um, kind of not all of the audio options. I'm not that picky, but I do love Moribito. I used to own the DVD set. Um, I have since sold that, I believe. Um, and I will still keep my Media Blasters release, but I did just, this again was like on a pre-order sale, so I picked it up just because I do really love the series, and this one is natively Region B, which is a good thing for me. Um, yeah, uh, so this is the story of Balsa. Our main character here, who's a spear wielding uh, woman, uh, she kind of works as a bodyguard for for various, um, you know. Well, yeah, she's kind of a mercenary, so you'll uh, hire her to to escort you to places. Anyway, she gets kind of caught up in this various political um, situation. And she ends up being hired by the like the queen or or the the first the first queen of a particular country to protect the young prince Chagum, uh, who is her son, and escorting him to safety. Uh, he Chagum has um, he's not exactly quite what you see. Um, but the story is about them traveling together and uh, also trying to avoid some some crazy magical spiritual stuff that's also going on. 
I love I, I love this series so much. It's an adaptation of a novel series. I think just the first novel, I think. Um, it's beautiful. It, the characters are, are amazing. Um, this is the same. So the novelist is the same as um, the like Aaron the the beast player or um, be yeah beast beast player Aaron or Ellen which used to be on streaming on Crunchyroll I do not think it's there anymore um, and that's unfortunate because that was the only way you could watch it um, and that recently has gotten a novel like the the four novels released as two hardback. Um, books which I own. I also own the only two Morebito books that HarperCollins put out. Is it HarperCollins? I don't, it doesn't really matter but um which is a shame because I think there's nine books in that but perhaps understandable because I don't know how well they sold and I believe the upcoming film The Deer King uh is also one of her novels which i think the which i th i've heard from the one the translator um that is also being released she's been translating it but i don't know if it's been announced yet and that interview that i read that for was a couple years ago so i don't know what's quite going on with that but it doesn't matter we'll see Moribito is wonderful. Highly recommend you pick it up. There's been, you know, three, literally three different Blu-ray releases of it in the US. There's DVD copies kicking around as well. Um, pick it up. It's, it's very, 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 very good. Another UK release. This one I pre-ordered uh, as with the, the final um, release in this, this series. Uh, but this is Oari Monogatari Volume 3, which is a two-disc release collecting well, the, the third part of Oari Monogatari. Uh, so I received this one. I think Zoku has just been released in the UK, so hopefully that has shipped out to me. I don't really remember if it has yet or not. <laughs> um, but this is, I mean, it's more Monogatari. How to explain? Um... Do not start with this part of the franchise because you won't know what the hell is going on. Uh, this is the most recent, well, this and Zoku are the most recent additions to the Monogatari franchise, which starts with Bakke Monogatari, um, featuring, um, featuring our main character Koyomi Araragi as he helps various... Um, he helps fix or get involved in various supernatural situations. Um, sometimes he's less of the main character. It focuses on some of the other characters, but most of the time he's the one helping helping these situations out. If you know nothing about Bakemon and um, I do think it is a really good series. It's one that kind of established current era shaft and current era shimbo art art direction um or in, in directing just in general if you've seen like the the shaft head tilt memes uh this is the series that started those um so based off of the light novel series yeah arguably light novel series um monogatari the monogatari franchise um it follows a high school boy who, in during the spring a golden week break, uh, he runs into a vampire, gets turned into a vampire, um, then subsequently has to find a way to get unturned from a vampire, which happens. That's all of Kiza Monogatari spoilers, but that's like the literally the setup for the actual first novel, Baki Monogatari. Wherein he meets uh, a several girls, several classmates, and and uh, other people <clears throat> who have various issues. Um, we have Senjo Guhara, who, despite 
being a full grown, um, athletic young woman has absolutely like no weight to her whatsoever. We have, uh, uh, Hachikuji, who is this character here, who is a, the, a little girl who is, um, constantly getting lost and he's trying to help her find her way home. Uh, we have um, Hanakawa, his classmate and really the, the first girl that he lo has ever, you know, fallen in love with. And she's incredibly smart, incredibly talented, um, but who every so often has, seems to be uh, possessed by a certain certain cat spirit. We have uh, Nariko. Not, what is her name? The the middle school girl, one of his, his sister's friends, who uh, has a snake curse placed on her, and then, um, and, oh, and, oh, what's her name? The, the underclassman who is a big fan, like, best friends with Sanjo Guhara, who has discovered a monkey's paw. There, oh, it's so that's like the basic premise. There's always some some shenanigans, some supernatural shenanigans going on, and Aravagi being a, I mean, pretty typical teenage boy, but he does have a very strong sense of like wanting to help people, um, very strong sense of responsibility to make sure that other people are okay, and if he has the power to help, then he will. Um, which I think is an aspect of his character that kind of gets forgotten because it is overshadowed by some of his more like pervy teenage boy antics, um, which are quite hit and miss. I don't think they're necessarily, I, if you have a problem with, with, um, Bakumonogatari, that's probably one of like the largest reason is, is his own just, <laughs> yeah. Oh, puberty. Um, <laughs> but, but I do think that, like, overall, it's a really solid series. Uh, obviously, the supernatural element is really interesting, but I do think that despite it having, like, a very harem setup and execution to it, it's not real, like, it's not a true harem in the same sense that something like Love Hina or whatever is, um, which I appreciate. And I do actually like Aragi quite a lot. Um, I think he is a really interesting and, and decent, like, main character. Uh, I like majority of the girls. Uh, and when you get into l latter parts of the franchise, i.e. Nisa Monogatari, Neko Monogatari, Monogatari 2nd, which is kind of technically the third season, and then the Oari Monogatari, which is the like final parts of these arcs, um, then you have so many additional characters. You've established so much with these characters' relationships that um, it it does really pay off when when things are happening. Um, yeah, I mean, the novels you can read in, in almost all of their entirety thanks to uh, Vertical. <clears throat> well, I guess Kadansha nowadays. Um, and I do think that Nisi Eason, who is the author, if I didn't make that clear, is currently working on, like, a, a separate new series related to this. I mean, it's, it's still this, but it's, it's Monster Story versus, yeah, versus, like, whatever previous ones had been, or Ghost Story, I, I don't really remember. Um... And so I'm sure we will see much more of the Monogatari being adapted to to anime because this series prints money for Shaft. I'm pretty sure this and like, well, yeah, this is what keeps them afloat for the most part. Uh, yeah, I mean, it it's a very it's one of those series that is extremely full of talking heads, as is all of Nisio Eason's works. Um, it's just characters talking to each other, which is why the distinct visual style uh, is 
pretty crucial to how it has succeeded because it's boring just watching two static characters talking to each other and no movement in the frame um, whereas this features a lot of cut cutaways a lot of really interesting angles etc 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 uh but yeah i mean what to say i don't even really remember what happens in this i don't have i i feel like i have watched this i i'm pretty sure i have watched this but it all gets jumbled up because I never remember what part is which. Um, obviously Hachikuji is on the cover here. Uh, I don't know what's going on. It's also got um, Ue in there, so who knows. And Senju Guhara on the back. I, I might have to do a rewatch, but there's so- oh my gosh, there's just so many episodes. <laughs> so much effort, so much Monogatari. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is just more of the same. It's it's the UK release of what what the US got, but for much cheaper. And uh, finally, closing out the the Monogatari franchise as to what has been released so far. I got a couple Australian releases. Um, I got them both used. No, I got one used, I got one new for very cheap. Uh, namely because, so I have, I don't know if I've seen the second season of this. I did, I got both seasons. I, maybe I do have seen the second season. I don't, it's been a long time. It's been a very long time. And I wouldn't say this is like the best show ever. Um, but I, okay. So this is Gutchman Crowds, uh, season one. And then Gutchman Crowds Insight, which is season two, which is, Obviously, kind of a anime reboot or um, soft reboot, maybe, uh, or continuation to Gacha Man. Um, in sort of in the style of the current like SSSS Gridman and Di Dina Zemon. Is that yes? Um, or even like Samurai Flamenco, which isn't really a reboot of anything but it's a very heavy homage to like every super sentai stuff thing that has ever been made um <laughs> something which i have been coming to appreciate more and more obviously so i didn't grow up with any of these things um i don't think a lot of uh like people outside of japan grew up with these things um, I mean, people grew up with Power Rangers and things like that, but I, I don't know how many kids were watching Gacha Man as, like, a formative thing to their, their youth. So, although, like, I'm not familiar with the original Gacha Man, I know it did get a release from Sentai many, uh, many a year ago now, um, but really so i watched the first season and i didn't necessarily like like it for the characters the main characters but honestly honestly best character was the villain because miyano mamaru just having so much fun he's just having way too much fun and i i'm really happy that he was because he made that series bearable i loved it um, the other, I guess, quote-unquote villain of that piece is really, Ruri, is really interesting as well. Um, I think there's significantly less Mamo in the second season, just because, well, hopefully you defeat the villain in the first one. But I think he's still hanging around, or, and so you do, he does pop in every so often. Um, I just, I literally don't remember enough if I've even finished insight to be perfectly honest so maybe that's a a prompt for me to rewatch it um but in saying that like this is a very interest like visually interesting it's got like the super flat um kind of aesthetic to it in some points it's quite interesting um having gone into it not knowing anything about gacha man i don't really remember um, like, if I was super confused about that element or not, probably. <laughs> um, but I also don't remember how much it relies or leans on a prior knowledge of, of the franchise. 
for you to enjoy it. I did think that the larger, like, tone of, like, how... I don't necessarily agree with the message of the first season, but I do think that it is very true to life as to how modern... Well, how people in the modern era react to crisis and how social media is utilized in our day to day and how social media is used in a crisis. I think there's a lot of really interesting ideas and I do need to rewatch it because it's been, I remember finding quite a few things very curious and, and it's really interesting. I like possibility to explore. I don't really remember how much they commit to to that. I, it's going to be a lot of I don't really remember because it has been a long time. I watched the first season streaming and I, I maybe what maybe I only watched the first couple episodes of Insight. I don't remember. Um, yeah, I find the main character. I found her pretty insufferable at the time. She was very annoying, but maybe my attitude has changed just because of. I don't know. Maybe I've grown as a person. <laughs> um, maybe I'll find it less annoying. Uh, but maybe I'll find it more annoying. Who knows? It's going to be the, the gamble that we take. Um, but yeah, in saying that, this isn't a bad show. I do think that it has a lot of really interesting elements to it. And this, along with like some of the more recent re like anime reboot franchise stuff, has been... Like, I think this is a, a touch ahead of its time, as was, like, Samurai Flamenco, where it's just now um, triggers, like, SSSS um, reboots are doing really well, and I think there may be renewed interest in, in having um, a, a refreshed look at some of these, at some of these classic titles. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's not a series for everyone, and I honestly, I don't know that it's one that I could recommend for everyone to buy and watch, but visually it's interesting, has a lot of interesting ideas, at least the first season, and Miyami Mamoru as the villain um, is just hamming it up, and I love that. I, I lo it, it's so good. So watch it for that, if nothing else. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, uh, Gatchaman Crowds and Gatchaman Crowds Insight. We have the Right Stuff sale things that I picked up. A couple titles that I'd been meaning to get for ages and just didn't just didn't have the the. Well, I knew that I could wait for a sale for them. To be perfectly honest, so the first of three that I got from. Yeah, that I got from uh, Funimation is Gangsta the Complete Series, The Essentials Release. This is a partial adaptation of, I mean, this is a pretty solid adaptation insofar as like manga to anime, but it's very incomplete. This is the last series that Manglobe did before it just um, died. Uh, and it has a very like, read the manga ending <laughs> where literally our characters are, are jumping into a fight and that's it. That's the end of the show. You're like, oh cool. Uh, which is a shame because Gangsta is really, really good. I am a big fan of the manga. have been for a little while. I think people are maybe less aware of it now just due to Kosuke's uh, ongoing hiatuses. Her, she has very serious medical issues. And, you know, that's, that is paramount, you know, you look after her health first and foremost. But it's a really interesting action scene in about, uh, like, a, a city district, it's kind of the slums area, uh, where our main characters work and, uh, Nico? Yes, Nico and Warwick, um, are, uh, like they have a handyman uh, business, and in with saying handyman, they they go fix problems. So Nico is this character here. He is what is known as the Twilight. So he's like a, a genetically strength altered strength super soldier um, who, because of that, does have to constantly be using a particular medication to, um, you know, 
so his body doesn't destroy itself. He's also really interesting. He's completely deaf. Um, and so I think that was one of the first deaf characters I had seen in manga. And the way that that's portrayed in the series is really well done. Um, and then Wark is, you know, his partner. He's just a normal guy. Well, not quite normal, but he's not a super soldier or anything. He's the brains behind the operation. Uh, Nico is the brawn. And then we also have Alex, who is this very sexy lady on the cover, who uh, at the beginning of the series kind of joins their their group. Uh, she is a former sex worker um, who has been kind of struggling for the last several years, and she's rescued by, by the two of them and, and kind of becomes their... I don't know, she looks after the everything for them, whereas they're all running, running off and getting into fights and getting all beat up. She's there, like, taking calls or, like, making meals. So she doesn't actually get into a lot of the action and what's happening. She's not just, like, the little miss in the office, but she's also the one that allows them to come home, quote-unquote, and feel human, um, which I think is also a very important uh, role that sometimes gets forgotten about when we are focused on like gritty, gritty seinen stories like this. Um, there's also a really great cast of side characters. I do really, like, I think all of the characters in the series are really good. I think the story is really good because there's sort of a larger conspiracy as to why why certain things are the way they are. Um, oh, there's there's various discrimination narratives. There's mafia. There's all sorts of gang wars. There's all sorts of things going on. Um, although this anime is like quite unfinished in that it doesn't ha tell a satisfying story, I do think that ultimately it does capture a lot of what is really good. It's nice to see these characters running around and the music's great. The opening in particular is really cool for this one. Um, and so it wasn't, you know, super high priority for me, but um, when I saw it on sale for like 10 bucks, I was like, oh, yay, finally. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just a, another addition to 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 the shelves and it's one that I do want to rewatch because I, I do like Gangster a lot and it's a shame that um, you know this studio in particular is no longer with us because I do or I did do appreciate everything that they released they they're very um, they were able to to take risks on stuff and I don't think there's too many studios that that really do risky projects anymore, which is a shame. Uh, considering we have four million anime being released every year, there's very, there's nothing that feels very risky anymore. And I, I just like that because the risky stuff is usually my favorite. <laughs> um, but yeah, Gangsta, the complete series. Have uh, the Essentials Complete series release of Barakamon, which is the story of a 20 odd year old uh, professional calligraphy artist uh, or calligrapher who, after some drama at a particular um, yeah, competition, he is sent to a very isolated island all uh, just completely really cut off from from Tokyo and and everything else going on there uh, much to his chagrin but he decides to go and once there uh, and he's kind of just settling into his new home because it like it's a small island but there's still people like it's still inhabited right <laughs> um, it's just very uh, cut off from from the mainland and so small town everyone's super interested in you know this this young guy from the city all the city slickers coming um, but namely he gets to his where he'll be staying his house 
and uh, he meets this little girl, Naru, um, and and basically she becomes the kind of vehicle for Honda to connect with with the village, like the townspeople, um, and. She's she's a little girl. She's a pain in the butt. She's certain she's quite destructive. Um, wants a lot of attention because she's young and uh, she's really just interested in this stranger from Tokyo. This this the city slicker. Um, and she's super proud of where she comes from. So she's keen to show him around and tell him where all the good fishing spots are and yada yada yada. Um, and Honda's just a little bit like I don't. Little girl, I don't. Where are your parents? I don't know why you're talking to me. I'm just trying to get my work down done. But it, Naru acts as a way for him to come out of his own shelf and get out of his own shell and get out of his own head, um, and actually form connections with other people, which is something he's always been struggled with quite a bit. Um, he's not exactly the most social guy, uh, and also gain an appreciation for, like, the simple, simple parts of life, um, whilst also, like, it's kind of a cultural exchange. He, they can teach him about, or he can teach them about, uh, what it's like to live in Tokyo and, and the convenience of things there, whilst also learning about like how to appreciate knowing how knowing all of your neighbors and how that can help in a in, in this like crisis situation or when you're struggling that that camaraderie of of everyone knows everyone which can be great which can also be terrible right like there's and I I think I think the anime kind of focuses on the positives of of like small town living um whereas I think it's a little bit more balanced in the manga manga is very good I haven't read all of it I've read three quarters of it um I really enjoy it it's not one that I own but I've read through the library and it's it's wonderful I, th I think some people are worried it's out of print now. I don't know how accurate that is just because COVID is skewy with everything. Um, but, but this is a very good series. Very sweet. Very fun. Quite heartwarming. Lighthearted. A little bit cynical. Um, but overall, very, very wonderful. And again, one that I'm happy to have just picked up with, with the sale. Next we have the complete series Essentials release of Yona of the Dawn. A, this is how I think most people were introduced to Yona. It's certainly how I was introduced to Yona. Um, the manga was licensed a little bit after this and is a series that I absolutely adore. I recently got volume 30 which you will see in my manga pickup video if you watch that and um, it's still phenomenal. Uh, this is the anime adaptation, obviously. It only adapts up to, um, I want to say, like, volume 8-ish, uh, which, at the time, felt like a lot. Having now read so much more, um, this really is kind of the, the preemptive, well, yeah, like, almost the prequel to what Yona's actually about so the way the way that I um, the, the reason I'm describing that is so if you know nothing about Yona it is about a young princess Yona who um her king or her father's the king um were quite well liked blah 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 she has two childhood friends her cousin who um uh Suwon obviously cousin and the boy that she loves and then also Hawk, who is not only her personal bodyguard and extremely um, respected young general for the the um, Wins tribe, um, 
but also a childhood friend. All three of them are very close. But one day, one day, she is betrayed by Suwon, who murders her father and ousts her and takes over the throne for himself. Um, there's some there's some drama there. And obviously feeling betrayed, Yona uh, is escapes the castle and and her her cousin and the boy that she loves with Hop. Uh, protecting her and the two uh yeah to escape um whilst they're on the run they well certain certain um things come to pass people believe that that the two of them are dead and so suon takes the takes over the crown no worries right um Fortunately for them, uh, Hawk is just like a crazy strong guy, um, and so he—they're not dead; they're fine. <laughs> um, but they're—they come across like this priest who gives them a prophecy, um, and they find out that Yona is the reincarnation of legendary figure of old, the Crimson Dragon King, who was the person to unify the the kingdom in the first place. And so now, Hawk and Yona and and um, y- Yun, they're like a little add-on, um, have to go around and find the four dragon warriors who, um, you know, are fated to serve serve the the true true crimson dragon king. Um, so a lot of this particular series is them finding said dragon warriors. We have Jeha, well, actually we have Gija, the, the white dragon. We have then Sinha, the blue dragon. Jeha, the green dragon. And at the very, very, literally like the last episode, the last five minutes of the last episode, um, they meet Zeno, who is the yellow dragon. Um, and, and there's a lot of, like, this isn't a bad series, right? I, I like it a lot. It's what got me into the series. But because we never have the four dragons together, uh, except for the, literally the last, like, five minutes of the last episode, it, it feels like something's missing. Um, because really, some of the best part... Well, really... The best parts of Yona come after the dragons have been found, um, and and it really doesn't feel like you you're getting the full experience if you don't have all the four dragons um, along with Yona and Hawk and Yun. It's just ah, uh, it kind of makes me sad a little bit, <laughs> um, which is why this is a series that a lot of people have like really championed deserves a second season. Um, I don't know how likely that is, but I do think that the manga is phenomenal and I highly encourage you to read it if you have watched this show and enjoyed it. Um, yeah, Yona of the Dawn is very, very good. Very reminiscent of the action fantasy shoujo stuff of the 90s and early 2000s and is honestly... I, the manga is one of my favorite things coming out right now. Um, and the, the, the anime is pretty, pretty good too. Um, it's not bad by any, like any stretch of the word. Right. But it's not, it's just a little bit different. It gives a, it's just a little bit like, ah, that was a good, um, I don't know, taste test for, for the larger series. Um, so maybe look at it that way. Finally, we have some, um, what is this, discotheque releases, again from the birthday sale. Uh, this is of a series that, like, I have such a weird relationship, right? Um, so people who follow me on Twitter will know that during last year when everything, like, COVID lockdown was, and everyone had all of the time in the world, um, I decided to, like, catch up and finish a lot of the anime that were on my backlog, um, a lot of my physical backlog, and a lot of my streaming backlog. So I wanted to 
get through all of the shows that I'd like started five years ago and like watched three episodes and just stopped because I was like, oh, I'll get back to this and just never did. Um, and this series was one of them. <laughs> and, and, and people who, who follow my Twitter will know that I almost lost my mind watching this show. Uh, I haven't f really finished it. I, I need to watch season four. Um, but I don't have season four here. It was never released. Um, but this is Yo Mushi Pedal. <laughs> um, so we have season one, which is 38 episodes. We have season two, uh, which is Grand Road, which is also like actually just a continuation of season. I mean, season two is our continuation to season one, but you don't understand. You don't understand. Literally, like this finishes mid race. Like it, it, the last episode is still mid race. And then this is like, oh yeah, here's the rest of that race. And you're like, why did, why did you break it up like this? What is going on? This, okay. And then I also got um, the film, like, I guess these are recap films of the two seasons. And then Reroad, yeah. Yomushi Pedal, Reroad, and Reride. Oh my gosh, no, do not fall and then uh the movie right which has a Miyano Mamoru character in it just by the way uh only reason to watch it no <laughs> I actually don't mind the movie um it's pretty okay it's not the worst thing in the world anyway okay anyway holy moly um so So this series is about um, a, a freshman in high school um, who, he's a big, he's an otaku, he's a big dork, he loves this particular magical girl series, and so every day he, he cycles, he, he takes his mum's old like push bike and cycles to Akiba, or Akihabara, and uh so unbeknownst to him he's like really good at at riding a bicycle um because his mom's old push bike doesn't have any gears and he just it should take him all day but really it takes him an hour he's just super he's been training he's been training as a cyclist he didn't even know it um but, so, he starts school, and it's at the top of this, like, really, really steep hill. And he's just cycling to school, and he kind of runs into this guy, like, one of his other, another freshman, who is, like, a keen cyclist. He's been competing for a long time. Basically, it's about this nerd who joins the cycling club, um, and he doesn't really know anything about cycling, but he has a, his hidden power, um, because he's been... Se unknowingly training um, all this time. And uh, Asaka Michi is our main character. He's a sweetheart. I love him. I actually really like all of the first years. I like quite a few of... I like the second years a lot. Third years, I don't give a shit. Um, their captain is terrible. <laughs> this is one of those shows that, like, like in Kuroko, it's just so bullshit. Like everything about it, all of the the competing, all of the actual sports. There's all weird powers that these teenagers have. Um, I never remember like ninety percent of the characters' names, but I do like some of the characters, and it's silly and over the top. And oh, the villain, like the villain quote-unquote, uh, is, is just, I, every time he's on screen, I just, I can't handle it, because he's like, oh, he's not, he's not even human, he's like a weird lizard boy, and I'm just, how do, how is this alien, how is this alien competing with ever all of these other kids, I don't know, um, I still, I'm just still gobsmacked, but, okay, so, what to the point is that I actually like a lot of the characters. Um, I think a lot of the character arcs are really interesting. Uh, I mean, the actual sports 
aspect of it is bullshit and like very over the top portrayed in the same way that like Kuroko is. I know everyone's gonna be like, no, Kuroko's realistic. I don't know. Don't at me. It's so stupid. <laughs> but, but, um, in the first season I like, like the characters are cute and whatever. And, but it's just silly and fun and not a huge amount of brain space dedicated. Somehow, somehow, second season, the end of the second season, like the end of this big race, I cried. I obviously was invested enough that I cried because holy moly, um, wow. So for a silly and dumb and like over the top and wild and crazy, this is not like, I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend your peta to to most people. I wouldn't say that it's a good show necessarily. But oh man. <laughs> when it wants to be it's quite effective and it's just a fun time. Like sometimes you just sometimes you don't want something to be super, you know, crazy. Well, no, you sometimes you don't want something to be super serious. Sometimes you just want to put something on TV and not have to engage your brain. And you'd be like, ha ha, yeah. That absolutely makes no sense. But I'll I'll take your word for it. Um, also, like with most sports anime, it is. If you're a, like, food fujoshi or fudanshi, if you like shipping characters with other characters, this series has got you covered. Um, <laughs> you, you will, you have all of the options. Um, yeah. What else to say? Literally nothing. It's a dumb, silly, fun sports series that just gets beyond maddening at points, but overall it's just a really fun time. And, uh, it was, this was a series that I've been, like, considering buying for a while, um, even before I finished it on, like, Crunchyroll and that, but I'm happy that like I actually did manage to get through it, and it was a emotional roller coaster to say the least. I I think I've lost some points of sanity, but I'd do it again, right? Like <laughs> I'd do it again. It's still fun. Uh, <laughs> at least I know what to expect for certain aspects. Uh, but yeah, you know. This isn't, it's not a series that will appeal to everyone. It may, might not be a series that appeals to anyone. I uh, haven't read the manga. I don't think it's necessarily worth it because it's so long um, and slow, slow paced, um, which the show uh, duplicates pretty, pretty well. The 38 episodes and they just can't even finish the race. Oh my god. Um, but yeah. Yomushi Battle. That's everything for anime that I got this month. Um, let me know your thoughts, opinions, feelings on anything that I talked about. Not a huge... Well, I mean, considering some months I don't get any anime, it is quite a bit, but it's also not like the most anime that I've ever gotten. Um, all of it facilitated by... Well, all of the US stuff facilitated by sale. Uh, UK releases... Uh, well, some sale stuff, some that was a pre-order, and uh, Australian stuff, just picking up, picking up something from, uh, you know, when I had wanted it last, um, or just maybe filling a gap might be a better word. I don't know. Um, but yeah, there's a quite wide range of stuff here. Let me hear your thoughts, feelings, opinions on any of the shows that I talked about today. Do you agree or completely disagree? I love reading your comments and do try to reply to them uh, if and when I can. Otherwise, um, as always, I am G from Simply G. You can follow me on Twitter if you like in the description below, the link to that, uh, at Collecting G. You can also, if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this, you're wanting to see more, you can subscribe. That would be appreciated. I also post manga content very regularly, uh, reviews, recommendations, things like that, as well as the podcast that I co-host, Read Right to Left, with my good friend Ray from Whimsical Pictures. Um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. 
I'll catch you in the next one. Bye till then.